Hey fam, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Emily and I love playing with makeup and all things beauty. And it's May now, so that means it's time for April favorites. If you wanna see what makeup and skincare I've been loving in the month of April, please keep on watching. All right, here we are. We are still in my alternate space because we are trying to sell our house right now. And instead of trying to constantly clean it and get it ready for showings or whatnot, we just decided to stay somewhere else in the meantime while it is on the market for my sanity, for my kids' sanity. Of course, they're still at home with online school. So we are in this sort of alternate setup for now. I might change locations from video to video. My upload frequency is quite a bit less because the internet here is piss poor and it takes significantly longer for me to upload videos. So I, of course, am still working full time as well. It's just been a little bit harder, so I, I'm still trying to keep as consistent as possible. But for now, this is what we've got. My lighting is off. I'm using um, natural light, but of course it's cloudy as heck today. So if the lighting changes in and out. I apologize for that. Not much I can do about the lack of sun. Anyways, we are going to get right into the things that I've been loving in the month of April. This is a little bit difficult because a lot of my stuff is packed up. Of course, when you are trying to sell a house, you pack up all your crap. I decided to just bring a one box full of stuff with me here. So that's the stuff I've been playing with in the month of April. We thought we were only going to be here for a week, but of course, as my luck would have it, in the hottest real estate market in a decade, I can't sell my house. So We've been here a little longer than planned. I've been basically just reusing the things and testing out the things that I brought with me and I haven't had a chance to dive into a whole lot more. However, I did have the opportunity to shop my stash a little bit and pull out some things that I haven't used in a while or haven't tested in a while and see how I felt about them again and make a real definitive opinion. So that is what I've done. So the favorites that I have here, most of them are not very new to me, but I've pulled them back out and shot my stash and really fell in love with them again and there's a few fails here that I thought I liked and decided mm -mm, nope one is a new fail it is a new product that I got recently and I've just decided it's it's just not for me and I will tell you why the first favorite I have is a foundation and that is the Revlon Candid foundation this is a drugstore foundation. It's very affordable. I will have it linked down below. This is the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation. I have it in the shade 300. I have really, really been loving this foundation this month. I find it to be very natural on the skin. I find it to smooth over my skin really, really nicely. It wears well on me. It sits beautifully on my fine lines and my pores. It is what I'm wearing today. The shade match is pretty good right now in the early spring. It's been a cold spring and wet and rainy spring so far. So I, and I haven't been using my self tanner because it's packed. So this shade has been working out really well for me. I already knew that the concealer version of this is one of my absolute favorites. So I brought the foundation out again and I thought I would give it a try because I had forgotten what I really felt about it. And this is a really, really great foundation. I, I think this actually is better than a lot of my higher end foundations and it's, I don't hear a whole lot of people talking about it. This isn't one of the drugstore foundations that you hear raved about all the time. It's not new, so it's been out for a while, but I've really, really enjoyed it and definitely been a favorite in April and I've been reaching for it a lot. Next, we're gonna talk about a powder combination that I have been loving this month. One is a newer product to me. Uh, it was in, featured in a recent haul that I put up, but as soon as I started using it, I absolutely have fallen head over heels in love with it. And the other powder is not new to me. It has been a favorite in the past, but in the early spring where the it sometimes heats up during the day, but then it's cold again, but then it heats up. My skin is kind of going through it. It hasn't really decided if it's gonna start being combination again or just normal, sometimes dry. But these two powders have really been keeping my makeup in place and looking good all day. And the star of the show, I am just absolutely blown away by this powder. It is the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. Now this little guy, and it's a little guy, 
This is a little compact. I got it on sale. This is a very, very pricey powder, but oh my God. This is the smoothest powder I've ever felt in my entire life. It is so silky. What It's so funny what comes to mind. You know that scene in Christmas Vacation where he sprays the stuff on the bottom of the sled and then just takes off down the hill? When I uh, Maybe it has to do with the shape, but when I touch this powder and then slide my fingers across each other, that's what it feels like. It almost makes, reduces the friction between my two fingers. It is absolutely the lightest, silkiest powder I've ever experienced in all my life. I have it in the shade light and I have always really struggled with under eye powders. I have lots of fine lines under my eyes. I am over 40. I am 40, but you know, we're almost halfway through the year, so I'm over 40. I've really struggled with lots of powders making my fine lines look worse, not only because the concealers crease in there, but the powder actually creating this sort of combination with my concealer where it cracks and I've got sort of these cracks in my concealer under my eyes and it does not look cute. This powder is absolutely incredible. Every concealer that I already liked that I've tried this with has absolutely elevated it to the next level. It is a pricey powder. It is absolutely a pricey powder, but oh my God, so far I think it is worth every single penny. Pat McGrath has really excellent sales on her website. Just keep an, a lookout for it. And I would definitely say, obviously get it on sale if you can, but I would absolutely recommend this product 100%. It has, it makes my under eyes so, so smooth. It doesn't mattify them too much. It's just enough to make the area look a little less cavernous, but uh, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful product. And I'm really happy I bit the bullet and tried it. And it is absolutely my new favorite under eye powder, 100%. Way better than the Charlotte Tilbury on me. The Charlotte Tilbury powder is too heavy for my under eyes. It definitely does the cracking thing. This does not. And it makes my concealer and my under eyes look absolutely younger, youthful, magical. I love it. The other powder that I've been absolutely loving this spring is not new. It's been featured in a favorites video, I believe in the past and it is the Nikia Joy Velvet Finishing Powder. Now, the name is deceiving. This is, in fact, a setting powder. It is not a finishing powder when you think of like your hourglass finishing powders. This is such a good setting powder. It really does control oils. It is mattifying. It stops most foundation from gathering in my deeper forehead lines. It sets my makeup beautifully. It doesn't make my makeup look cakey. I use it with a big fluffy brush and just floof it all over. It really gives a, a very beautiful finish to the skin. I don't find it makes me look powdery, but then again, I don't use a ton, but, and I've never, I've never really baked, so I can't say if it's good for that. It's just a really, really lightweight, excellent mattifying powder. And I do find that it extends the wear of my more dewy, hydrating foundations that might start to break up during the day by controlling that oil that's coming through and breaking them down. Really, really love this. Nikia Joy Cosmetics has a US warehouse now, so the shipping is much, much faster than it was before. It is a reasonably priced powder. It is in that 20-ish dollar range. And oh, the smell, it just smells divine. It has a very light vanilla scent and it is a natural fragrance. It's natural vanillin. It is not an artificial fragrance. It has skincare benefits in it. It's just a really, really beautiful powder and I highly, highly recommend. Now, Nakia Joy, who is a fellow creator here on YouTube, she has oily skin and this is her product. So she created it to help control her oils. So I would definitely say that this is oily skin friendly. I have relatively normal skin that leans dry in the winter and more combo in the summer. And I have so far been through three seasons with this and have loved it every season yet. Can't wait to see what it does during the summer for me because I got it in the fall. Absolutely love this powder, highly recommend for sure. So if you hadn't noticed, face powders, face products, blush, Bronze, highlight seem to be the hot item right now. There's so many products coming out in that category. And I have quite a few here that I've been loving this month. Of course, most of them are packed up, 
but I did order some newer ones to me that I've been trying out over the month of April and I absolutely love them. So the first one is the Nabla Skin Bronzing Powder in the shade, I can't get the package open, <laughs> in the shade Soft Revenge. I have been using this as a bronzer slash sort of forehead contour, not so much contour here, but more of a forehead contour because I have a rather large forehead and it, it does have a bit of a sheen to it. It is just such a beautiful, silky, lightweight powder. And I find that it has the perfect amount of sheen. It is cool toned, but not too cool toned that it's gray. I just find it does a really good job of providing a slight contour to my forehead while warming up the skin as well. I know there's people who say that bronzing is not a thing and bronzer and contour are different, which they are, but this is a neutral tone where I can say that it almost does both. I do use it on my forehead and on the tops of my cheeks to warm up the skin, but it does provide a bit of that shadow effect that helps my forehead look a little less giant. I really, really like it. One of the things I'm loving a ton about this product, especially this month, again, like I've already mentioned, everything's packed. I am doing my makeup in an old mirror with one light because the other one's burnt out. This is a buildable product. It is not super pigmented. I can really get my brush in there and build it up, which has been a lifesaver with a really crap mirror situation because I'm, I'm practically doing my makeup in the dark and so I'm really loving having a product that is more buildable because I can't mess it up. So I don't come out of the bathroom and look at myself in natural light and be like, what the hell did I just do? It is what I'm wearing today on sort of the mid cheek area. I have something else as a contour and I do have it on my forehead. And I just really think this is a beautiful, beautiful product. It's a beautiful powder. It is very silky smooth. I got this from Beauty Bay when they were having a sale and I'm so happy I picked it up. I really have enjoyed it since I've gotten it and I highly, highly recommend it. It is a little bit more pricey, but so far, I mean, it has been an absolute lifesaver this month because I'm practically doing my makeup in the dark. I just, I don't think I would have looked or had as many good makeup days as I have without using this as my contour bronzer product. Absolutely recommend. So the other product from Nabla that I have been absolutely loving this month is their highlighter. This is the Skin Glazing Powder in the shade Ozone. This is a beautiful highlight. It doesn't emphasize any of my texture. It's got a beautiful sort of baked texture. It has the most glass-like sheen and it's just a stunning, stunning highlight. It is a bit of a champagne, very neutral, not really a color to it. It can get very blinding, so I do have to kind of watch it a little bit with this, but it's such a smooth powder. It just glides over the skin. It buffs out so, so easily. It doesn't leave a cast or a stripe on my face. It just melts into the skin. Like I have so far in my experience, I find that all Nabla powders seem to have that property where they don't look like powder on the skin. They just kind of melt in. This has been one of my favorite highlighters this month. I've really, really enjoyed it. I do love this tone of highlighter on my skin tone. And these come in all different colors. So I find that the Nabla range is very, very inclusive. So if you have struggled with finding the right bronzer or the right highlighter for your skin tone, check Nabla out because I've been really impressed with their range. And I do hear some about these products, but not a ton. And I think that they should be getting more hype because these are really, really great powders. This is such a, such a beautiful highlight and I absolutely recommend it. I also got this in the Beauty Bay sale a few months ago and I'm so happy I picked it up. Another bronzer that I've absolutely been loving is not a new favorite. It's just a continued favorite, but I just want you guys to know that when I have a favorite, it's not just for that month. I try not to be too repetitive, but this has absolutely been my perfect bronzer for this time of year. This is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Bronze It. I just feel like this is the perfect tone for my skin right now. I have it in the shade 01 Light and without any self tan on and without any natural color that I get in the summer, this is a perfect shade for me at the moment. It does have a bit of a, like a glow, not so much a sheen. Now this is a much softer sort of 
creamier powder than the Nabla. It is, it is very creamy feeling when you touch it with your finger. It is definitely warmer toned. I'll swatch it right here. So this is the L'Oreal and this is the Nabla. So you can see it is definitely a warmer tone, but it's still such a beautiful bronzer. I absolutely feel like this just toasts my skin in the most gorgeous way. It makes me feel alive, especially after I've blanked out my face with some foundations. I have some foundations that are just starting to get a little too light for me right now. And I'm like, oh gosh, that's that's too light. This is the perfect bronzer for me to correct that after the fact. If I put on a foundation or even a concealer that's too light for my skin tone currently, this seems to be the perfect bronzer to sort of neutralize that and bring it back to sort of a human level for my skin tone. It is a beautiful powder. You get a ton of product. Like this is a lot of product. I think I paid maybe $14 for this, but absolutely well worth it. This will last me forever because I use this every day especially right now. It is one of the few bronzers that I packed. I knew I'd be grabbing for it a lot, but I have been grabbing for it every single day. And I've barely even made a dent in the embossing. Like you can see that I have made a dent in the embossing, but barely. And I use this every day with my big fluffy bronzer brush just to warm up the skin and bring it back to life. It's absolutely a beautiful, beautiful product and I 100% recommend it. So another highlighter that I've been really, really loving this month and I knew the second I saw it launched, I knew in the promo photos that I was going to love this highlighter. It is absolutely right up my alley in terms of color and tone. And it is the Ofra Milk and Cookies Highlighter in collaboration with Steph Toms. If you don't know, Steph Toms is a creator here on YouTube. If you found me and you haven't found Steph Toms, I don't know, she's hilarious. I really, really think her content is great and she cracks me up all the time. But this is just such a stunning highlighter. Now, when you're looking at it, you're thinking, oh, this side is actually really kind of, could be kind of dark. This is the cookie side. But when you blend it out on the skin, it actually is not too dark for me that's it right here like it almost blends right in and I'll swatch the milk side as well right next to it so this is milk and this is cookies so they look darker in the pan than they are actually blended out and they are just of course the Ofra formula is absolutely one of my favorite highlighter formulas in the game they they just do it so right those are the two mixed together and it just gives this beautiful sort of champagne, slightly gold sheen to the skin. Uh, I mean, absolutely stunning formula, perfect shade for my skin tone. And it smells a little like cookie dough, which I think is just a perfect touch. I, I do like scented makeup because, you know, deep down inside I'm a child. So I, I just think this is such a beautiful product. I think Steph did a really great job curating the color here. And I think you cannot go wrong with an over highlight. They have tons of different shades, but this one has worked really, really well for my skin tone. And I've, it is what I'm wearing today. It just gives this beautiful sheen. It's not like a stripe. These can get very, very intense. So I use it with uh, like a my Persona double-ended blush highlighter brush. And I just take a bit and tap it in and let it go and just really work it into the skin and it just gives this sort of glow. I just find that I feel like I'm glowing instead of having sort of a streak of highlight. It's not glittery, it's just sheeny. And it's just absolutely stunning. I've really, really loved this highlighter. I've been reaching between this and the Nabla, it's like every day, one or the other, one or the other. And I did bring quite a few highlighters with me because I, you know, different shades, different colors, depending on my eye look kind of like blushes. You you know, bronzer, you have your tones that match your skin tone, but blush and highlight, you kind of match to your look. But these are the two that I've been reaching for pretty much every day. Absolutely love it. Would 100% recommend for sure. So for eyeshadow this month, I have to say that I've been particularly leaning towards one formula, one company of formula. Again, talked a little bit about my lighting situation. I have been leaning towards formulas that are very blendable, very goof proof due to my low lighting situation. I've been shying away from eyeshadows that are super pigmented that I struggle to blend out that I do have to be a little more gentle with. BH Cosmetics has absolutely been my go-to this month. I brought down with me my Blueberry Muffin Palette. 
So this is what I would have considered to be a bit out of my comfort zone when I got it. I heard Anella Ganequist raving about it and I thought, you know what? It was half off. It was like eight bucks. I'm going to give it a try. Uh, these blues just look stunning on the eye. They are approachable in every way possible. I think if you are not a blue lover or even if you are a blue lover, this makes blue a little more easy to work with because the shadows are so easy to work with. You can actually just dip your brush in and almost shear these out to get a blue wash of color instead of it being like blue, blue Mimi from Drew Carey show blue. I've really, really enjoyed this palette, but I also have the Smitten in Switzerland. I have the Avocado Toast palette. I've got the Barcelona palette, just BH Cosmetics in general. Their eyeshadow palettes this month have been an absolute savior for me because they're so easy to work with. They're blendable. They're not too unforgiving if you get a little too much on your brush. You can easily blend them out again. I just find them to be just so easy to work with, especially in my crap ass lighting situation right now. I need something that I'm going to come out of the bathroom and not look like a crazy person. The shimmers are, you just slide them on with your lid. They're high impact shimmers. They always look beautiful. They're not chunky. None of these palettes have any pressed glitters in them, which is great because, I mean, especially I'm not using a pressed glitters right now. I've got nowhere to go that I would require a glitter on my eyeball. If you have not tried out BH Cosmetics eyeshadows, I would absolutely recommend them. And if you are a little iffy about blue, try this one because it's cheap and the blues in here are absolutely wonderful to work with. You can shear them out, you can build them up and it, it's just fun to play with. This is just a really fun color story and it's absolutely beautiful. 100% recommend BH Cosmetics. I've got one more cheek product that I've been loving this month and this has been a favorite in the past so I'm not going to go on too much about it but I just find it to be something that I reach for all the time and this is the Ofra and Samantha March Chiclet Blush. I just... It's just an all around great blush. I love that it's a split pan and I can go for the matte side or the shimmer side. I love the tone in this. It works really, really well with my skin tone. It also works really well with a lot of the looks that I create. I guess this is sort of a tone that I that I reach for. It's just a wonderful, wonderful product. Again, Ofra does powder face products so, so well. So you're always gonna get a quality product even if this is not the color that works for you. These powders are absolutely stunning and I 100% I recommend Ofra, except their eyeshadows. I'm struggling with their eyeshadows. I just recently got an eyeshadow palette from them and I'm not loving it. I'm still playing around with it. It is packed up, so I had to pause on the testing it out, but their face powders, 100%. And the Chiclet Blush has been a go-to this month. It is not what I'm wearing today. I am wearing the new Milani cream blush today, testing it out, seeing how I think what I think about it. Cause I mean, for cream blush right now, the bar is pretty high. I have my absolute, absolute favorites. So we'll see if this Milani can hold a candle or compete with my absolute go-tos. The LYS cream blush and the MAC glow play are my two favorites as well as the rare beauty liquid blush. Absolutely love that as well. Can the Milani hang with those? I don't know. I will let you know. But this is, if I'm going to grab a powder blush, this is often the one that I'm grabbing for. This is often one that I'm grabbing for to set my cream blush as well. It's just a beautiful blush and I really, really highly recommend it. My last favorite of the month is not new to me. It's actually been sitting in my drawer for a couple of months and I, this is something I shopped my stash. I was like, oh yeah. I'm gonna grab that out and start using it a little more because I don't remember what I thought about it. And I absolutely love it. And that is the Glossier Boy Brow. It's so simple, but again, we're gonna go back to, I'm gonna repeat myself again, but with my crappy lighting situation, I need things that are foolproof. And this for me has been 100% foolproof. I have the shade brown, this is the tinted one, and it just helps me fill in my brows. I am not looking for a precise brow situation right now. I am not making little brow strokes. I am not trying to get, you know, a nice fluffy front part and a def no, mm -mm. no, nope, not enough light up there for that. I am literally just trying to make them look a little more even, fill in the sparse bits with the brow gel. This has totally been fitting the bill. It provides enough hold 
for me to just keep them where they're, I can't get sort of a feathery brow situation with this right now, but I'm not trying either. I haven't put it to that test, but just for an everyday brow product, just to add a little tint, give my brows a little more volume and to hold them in place so they're not like, you know, how they are when I wake up. This has really been absolutely my go-to. I have a few tinted brow gels, um, the Benefit Gimme Brows, and I just, I've really, really liked this is, seems to be the one that I'm grabbing more, even over those. I do have those with me here. Really liked the Glossier. Big fan. Big fan. So I have three fails this month. One is one that I really stuck it out to the bitter end. It will be going into my empties bin, and I will talk about it in my empties video as well. But I just thought it did absolutely nothing, even though I used it all the way up. Um, and I have two other fails that are newer to me. One is way newer to me but I just I just didn't work out so the one that I have used all the way up that I really gave a fighting chance to do what it's supposed to do is the herbivore is it herbivore or herbivore probably herbivore the herbivore prism 12% AHA 3% BHA exfoliating glow serum so this is a serum. I used it at night, every other night, alternating nights with my retinol serum. I picked this up after I ran out of my Pharmacy Honeymoon Glow. It was a little bit more affordable for a larger serum product. It had more product for less money. And I thought, okay, I'll give that a try. No. I mean, I did use it all the way up. I wasn't going to waste it because it was expensive, but I felt like my pores would still get quite clogged while I was using this product. I had to use my deep treatment exfoliating masks more often. I had to use clay masks to sort of expunge the crap out of my pores more often. I felt like I was getting more small little whiteheads, like not full on breakouts, but just little teeny tiny zits. I, I just... I didn't get any of that when I was using my pharmacy instead of this. I just didn't feel like it exfoliated. I haven't tested the pH on this. pH is very, very important when it comes to your liquid exfoliators. It has to be acidic enough to actually work. I haven't put this on a pH strip to see if it's actually at the correct pH to work because it may say that it has 12% AHAs, but AHAs have to be like a pH of like 3, 3.5, I think, to function. So this does not work for me. I mean, if you have super sensitive skin, this didn't irritate my skin at all. I mean, I don't feel like it did anything. I still feel like I got clogged pores. I didn't feel like I was getting as glowy skin as I did with the pharmacy. I just, the pharmacy is so, so much better. This was a fail, not a big fan. And it's a long time fail because this is, this is empty. This is absolutely empty. I used it all the way up, hoping that it would be better, but no, don't like it, didn't like it just didn't do anything. The second fail, I think I'm in the minority here. I just, I just don't love this. And I tried, and I tried. It might be because my under eyes are old and very creasy and a little temperamental and very dry. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I never tried the original because I heard it was dry and shied right away from it, but I heard, okay, Hydrating Camo Concealer. This is gonna be great. And you can see here, I've used quite a bit of this. Like this is not a, I used it twice and said, no, I hate this product. When I finally label something as a fail, unless it's an absolute fail, like I will try it out. I won't just use it a couple times. I'll try it so many different ways. So I have been testing this out for a couple of months and I just don't like it. It creases on me, it doesn't stay put. I find it looks crappy with most powders, even the Pat McGrath powder. I just don't like how it sits under my eyes. It looks heavy in some spots, but then like it's just uneven. It does the cracky thing really easily. I don't find it that hydrating. I just, I mean, the shade is not right either. I, I did get a shade that was a little too light, but yeah, so I've relegated this to the using it to highlight my face. It does do a good job of that, but I don't like it under my eyes at all. All. It is not a good under eye concealer for me. So it is a fail. It is a fail for me, unfortunately, because I wanted to love it. I mean, I have a drugstore concealer that I love, but this is a little higher coverage. My Revlon Candid Concealer is my drugstore favorite concealer, but this is a bit higher coverage than that one. So I was hoping to find something that was a little higher coverage, but no, I'll have to keep looking. I'll have to keep looking. 
because this isn't it for me. The last item that I have is a fail is one of those absolute fails. And I'm so sad because the formula on this is really good. I am wearing it today because I wanna show you why it's a fail. This is the Revlon Colorstay Satin Ink. This is their new lip formula. And I do really like the formula. It sort of feels it's a little sticky at times, but not uncomfortably so. Not like lips sticking together sticky, almost like a balm after you've been wearing it for a few hours, kind of that kind of tackiness. But the color stays like it. There is transfer, but not a ton of transfer. So it lasts a really, really long time. It's very, very comfortable. It is not drying at all. I was so excited for this. I really like the formula but I have now tried three different shades in this and they all end up this pink. There must be some kind of pH component here or something that my personal body chemistry is reacting to, but it, they all end up this pink color. And some pinker than others, regardless if I buy the nude nude one, the nude nude one, the 01 shade, bright pink. This shade is 07 bright pink. And I'm not about that bright pink life. I have actually paired this on top of a brown lip liner to try and temper down the pink. Nope, bright pink. Like I don't think it looks terrible, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't often think to myself, yes, I, I really want to wear a bright pink lip today. That's not the color that I'm often reaching for. I'm much more of sort of a nudie pink, cool tone pink, peach, sometimes even an orange, depending on what I'm going for. I'm not, this is not the color I'm often reaching for. So it's a, it's a fail because, I mean, I will wear it because there are situations where I think this lip color does really go with the look. It doesn't go with this look, but I had to wear it to, to make a point. I can think of a few eye looks that I love to do that this color would definitely match. I hate the fact that all of the shades that I've picked up from this line all end up looking the exact same shade of bright pink just varying levels of bright pink, but they're, they all end up pink. And this is not pink when you first put it on. I'll show you. So this is the color right when it goes on. It is more of a nudie beige pink. And then on my lips, it's bright pink. I don't get it. Revlon, what'd you put in your product that is reacting with my body chemistry that's turning everything bright pink? I don't, I don't like it. And I'm very upset about it because the formula on these is pretty good. I, li I like them for a long stay formula. I was super excited. I'm wondering if I go for just the bold colors, if I pick up the red, because then I know that I'm getting a red. Maybe it won't go bright pink. I'll have to try that. Hmm. So what were your faves and fails for the month of April? Please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear what everyone else has been loving this month and I would love to get a conversation going and help each other out about what products we're loving, what products are crap. If you've not subscribed to my channel, I would love if you did that. It really, really helps me out in I would love if you gave this a thumbs up as well if you liked the video. Helps with engagement, helps the YouTubes push my video out and have other people see it. I really hope that you guys have a wonderful day. I really hope that everybody out there is hanging in there. I know it's been a tough year and it keeps going. We are still in lockdown here in Ontario and it's been really a big struggle. Um, I've definitely been struggling, especially now with the added stress of trying to sell my house and move. And it is it's it's been stressful so i really hope you guys are hanging in there and be good to each other be nice to each other reach out if you need help and i really hope that everybody has a wonderful day stay safe be healthy and wash your damn hands bye